And I think I'm going to put up my little question that I have. And while we're waiting, no Googling, please, no reverse image search, but we're going to see if you can guess which Sonoma County town is this former gold mine located in. So see if you can recognize anything that looks familiar. Where might this be located? And if you think you might know, please put your answer in the chat box, put your guesses, and let's see if we can, we can figure out where this gold mine is located. All right, so we've got some guesses, Sebastopol Laguna area, west of Petaluma, Healdsburg, all right, we have another guest, Kenwood, Windsor. I think we're hitting every corner of Sonoma County here. <laughs> All right, folks, I think we're going to get started, and I'm sure some others will join us. So welcome, everyone. I'm so glad that you could join me today. My name's Ellie Mulrath. I am a park program assistant with Sonoma County Regional Parks. So on a normal day, you'll find me out in the parks, leading school field trips, public hikes, um, camps, all sorts of things. And today uh, I come to you virtually, <laughs> hello. <laughs> and Stephanie here is going to be helping me with, with answering questions in the chat box. I will stop kind of in the middle of the presentation. There'll be a little bit of a chance for question and answer. And then we'll do questions at the end as well. So we have a couple more guesses here. The question is, which Sonoma County town is this former gold mine located in? So our topic today is mining in Sonoma County, and this gold mine is actually located in Petaluma. So I find it really interesting. I see a lot of spots that look like this in the hills of Petaluma, and I always thought it was erosion from animals, maybe cows, or, or some other sort of industrial process. I did not realize that a lot of those may be old mines. So very interesting to me. All right. So once again, to remind you, if you are just joining in, please use the chat box to ask any questions. And let's get started. So during this presentation, we're going to be focusing on how mining practices kind of changed and informed the landscape of how Sonoma County grew. We're going to be focusing in like the 1870s, early 1900s era. And that's when a lot of our towns were very, very new. Santa Rosa actually had just become a town in um, 1850. So we're kind of journeying back in time and seeing how things looked a little different. This picture of 4th Street here, definitely different than it looks today. So we can't really talk about mining and how that informed the region without talking about railroads. Because a lot of the, the mines that were built actually had the railroads built up around them so that the goods could be shipped to other areas in California. And so if you look at this picture here, it does cut off a bit of Sonoma County, but um, if you look at the picture here, you can see the rail lines come down from Petaluma and they head either down to San Rafael or they would head around to Oakland um, because the San Pablo Bay was a really, a really big shipping hub. And then the Petaluma River was also used. So where these towns were built were actually where the rail stops were and the rail stops existed because of what industries existed. So either logging perhaps or mining. So this is a picture of the depot at North Street between 13th and 14th Street. So if you know where the YMCA is in Santa Rosa, it was located near there. The railroad actually used to run underneath present day North Street. And the reason I'm showing this slide is once again, where the depots and the rail lines were located were where a lot of our mining occurred. So we didn't have any mining in downtown Santa Rosa, but some of our other rail stops like Glen Ellen, there were mines nearby in Sonoma. And this isn't a train carrying cargo, but it is carrying passengers. You can see the little windows. It's like a little passenger train. And here's the Glen Ellen Hotel, if you're familiar with Glen Ellen. Looks a little different. And um, once again, you know, these towns, they grew up around where the rail stops were. So a hotel would be needed in case someone came in late and they couldn't, you know, take their horse and buggy on a 20 mile ride in the dark. And then general stores sprung up. So so the towns were built around the industry. 
Here's a great one of um, Occidental. Occidental is still kind of a smaller town, so there may be some similarities, but you can see a lot of industry going on here. They were shipping maybe lumber or materials from the quarries. There were a lot of quarries, especially in Guerneville. And the original, original name of the station was Howard's Station. And then here's a great one of Petaluma as well. So I'm not super familiar with Petaluma, but I know I have seen this building before. So if anyone knows what building this is, where it's located, if you're a Petaluma native, please let us know in the chat. But once again, the roads look a little different. We see some cars and also some wagons. So things were kind of changing around the 1915 era. So this picture shows the rail lines. And once again, I promise I'll start talking about mining in a moment, but the rails were so important for transmitting those goods. And so we had a lot of mines up here near Cloverdale, um, a lot in the Guerneville area, a lot in the Santa Rosa, Glen Ellen, Rincon Valley, Sonoma area along this ridge line here, and um, a lot in Petaluma as well. And a lot of these lines were decommissioned in the 30s as the automobile kind of started to become more popular. And then they were reopened for World War II. And then most of them were decommissioned again after. So now we're getting into the, the nitty gritty. And these are the resources we're going to be talking about today. Um, in Sonoma County, there was some gold mining. There was also extensive mercury mining and historically in documents, they'll refer to mercury as quicksilver. So I may kind of jump back between those two, those two names. And then cinnabar is a mercury ore. So often they would talk about mining cinnabar, but really what they were looking for is the mercury. There was some coal mining here, mining of various kinds of rocks and substrate. Paving stones were one of our biggest exports in Sonoma County and gravel as well. So we're gonna start off with gold. So we didn't have a gold rush here in Sonoma County like they did in other areas of California. Sutter's Fort um, would be one where there was just gold everywhere, but there was some gold discovered in Sonoma County. In the 1850s, there was actually a mini gold rush because people put out the word that gold was discovered in the Russian River. Folks came and realized there wasn't a ton of gold. All right. So I found this article doing my research and I thought it was so great. This mom of five, um, Mrs. Leggett, she had her mining claim and she would go out and she would pan for gold and all her neighbors made fun of her. Her husband was kind of joking about her and she made a whopping $3. So there was some gold to be found, but not at the levels that we had in other areas of California. There may be some gold hidden to this day though. I also uncovered a very interesting story. So um, a man named Granville Smith, who was the nephew of um, Daniel Boone, he went to Sutter's Fort and he made about half a million dollars mining for gold. He had those turned into $50 slugs and came to Sonoma County, hid the slugs all over like the Sonoma area, and then promptly forgot where they were buried and then died in 1875. So folks were starting to find his hidden gold around that area. Um, one worker in 1903 dug up about $7,000 on a ranch in the Sonoma area. Someone else who moved into the house that was vacated by Granville Smith, um, he found, let's see, $30,000 in gold hidden in the chimney. And then another gentleman found almost $50,000 buried in his dirt basement. So that leaves about $400,000 unaccounted for if you live in Sonoma. Um, might give you something to do, see if you can find that hidden treasure. So like I said before, um, mercury or quicksilver was one of the biggest exports. And so here we have miners at the Great Eastern Quicksilver Mine, and that was located near Guerneville. 
and mercury had jumped in price around the 1870s, so a ton of new mines opened up, and we actually had a pretty large supply to be mined here in Sonoma County. And the mercury was primarily used in extracting um, gold and silver. And then also in hat making, you've probably heard that term mad as a hatter because they used mercury um, when they were making hats. And um, we all know mercury is incredibly toxic. And then also for medical equipment and early photography. So the mercury wouldn't come out of the ground in liquid form. It would be connected to an ore like the cinnabar and um, extracted from that ore. And then gold and silver was discovered in Calistoga. I didn't include a lot about that in our presentation since this is Sonoma County focused, but um, that also ramped up the production of the mercury mines, not only in Sonoma County, but also in Lake County as well, in Mendocino County. Here's another picture of that same mine around 1890. And so this was on Sweetwater Springs Road. Um, and there actually are some locations out near Guerneville that still have remnants of this mercury mining, which can be a concern. Mercury is really toxic, not great for the waterways. And so um, there are some areas, I think one about four miles outside of Guerneville that, that still contains some, some leftover contamination that does threaten the Russian River. All right. So we were talking about cinnabar, and that's one of the, that's a mercury ore. So the mercury is contained inside this rock. So there were a lot of cinnabar mines as well. Um, the Cinnabar Theater in Petaluma perhaps is named after this mineral. And um, it was one of the most abundant of about 30 different mercury bearing minerals. So in these mines, they weren't always looking for cinnabar, but we do have a ton here in Sonoma County, or did. And so that was one of our, our major mines as well, our, our major ores. And so the miners working with in the mercury mines and extracting this mercury from the cinnabar uh, often had health problems. There was a d disease called salivation where they their gums would actually loosen and their teeth would fall out. They could go blind. So a really, really toxic product for people to be working with. There's also coal mines in Sonoma County, believe it or not. You know, this isn't, isn't at the level that it is maybe in, you know, West Virginia, but we did have a few mines also out near Guerneville, even though this is the Petaluma Mining Company, um, the mines did exist outside of Guerneville. And let's see, I've got one more picture. This one, you can really see how the mining changed the topography of the area. Um, this, this dip right here is not a natural hill. Um, they dug through the hill to get to the spot where they were going to mine. And just like that first picture I showed you of the gold mine in Petaluma that looks like kind of typical erosion, um, we've kind of incorporated these, these changes into our landscape and so maybe not noticing necessarily that the landscape was changed so much by these mining practices, but some of those rolling hills that you see may have had that earth moved in order to access the different mines. There was not a ton of information available about these coal mines uh, aside from the pictures but they did have a really prolific coal mine on Mount Diablo, which I found interesting, and one on Mark West Creek. But because it wasn't one of our major exports, there wasn't a ton of information available. So before we start talking about quarries, are, does anyone have any questions? Stephanie, did we get any questions in the chat box? Hey there, um, we do not have any questions at the moment, but we do have a comment from Susie. She wondered if the building in Petaluma was maybe the train station and art museum. Oh, Just great. Yeah. yeah, that would make sense. It is the old train station. So I know I've seen it. I don't know if it's maybe off of North McDowell, but I know I've seen it before. Thank you so much for, for that hint there. So moving on. Um, one of our biggest exports, one of our biggest resources that were mined was rock. Um, 
Rock was used for various things, paving stones, um, cobblestones, all sorts of different industrial uses. And so this is a quarry out near Sonoma. And it looks like they were doing paving stones. You can see the square stones here, or maybe some sort of bricks. These ones look a little smaller. And once again, you can see why it was so important to have rail stops nearby because they had to carry all of this down the mountain with a horse and carriage. Um, so yeah, those rail stations were locations were really important. So the principal stone quarries were in Sonoma, Petaluma, and then along that ridge that went from Rincon Valley out, out to Sonoma. And the majority of paving stones in the state came from Sonoma County. This quarry here in Petaluma started out um, as a rock quarry for paving stone. You can see um, how they had another, probably fin like a funicular rail line where, where it uses weights and pulleys. But they had some sort of system set up to get that, that heavy rock out to the railroads. And then later on, the, the mine, the quarry shifted to crushed rock instead. So different use. They must have run out of their big chunks to use for paving stones. So this is a picture of one of my favorite quarry locations because I spend a lot of time working at Spring Lake. And so this is the Wymore Quarry. And that was located in the town of Melita. If you've ever been to Spring Lake before, there's a little bed and breakfast near the entrance to Spring Lake and um, Annadale off of Montgomery Drive. And that little bed and breakfast actually used to be a town. It was a very thriving town. The railroad came right up to that bed and breakfast. It was the old rail station. And the reason the railroad stopped there was because of this quarry here. The um, quarry was owned by one of the McDonald families, the McDonald Mansion families. Um, and so when the rail line was being built, uh, Mark McDonald was able to get the rail line built right by his brother's quarry to ease shipping for his brother. And here you can see the system, um, the funicular rail where they would fill up and load a car, maybe this one here with a ton of different rock and then it would be heavy and it would head down the hill and that would power the empty cars to come back up. So like a pulley system and then it would connect straight to the railroad. And they were um, mining for andesite here. So not basalt like a lot of people think. Um, technically it was a different rock. I also love this view here because it shows this area down here is where the Wymore Quarry was in the Annadale area. And then um, the rail line actually ran under present day Montgomery Drive. So Montgomery Drive was paved right over those rail lines. And you can just see how different the landscape looks even in 19 or um, yeah, 1968. Very different, very um, very open, less developed than it is now. And then I believe this is the creek corridor here. You can see the line of trees. So the rail line ran right by the creek, shipping all of those, those items out to the East Bay. So at the Wymore Quarry, we had a lot of immigrants from all over the world that came to work in the various mines. But what made um, Wymore Quarry a little different is we had Italian immigrants from a region in Tuscany that were really experienced in stonemasonry because they worked in the marble mines or the marble quarries. And so these gentlemen, you know, weren't just laborers, they were architects. They um, were just really vital to building up Sonoma County. And a lot of the historical buildings that you see in Sonoma County were built by, by these gentlemen, these Italian immigrants from the marble quarries of Tuscany. So this right here is the St. Rose Church. If you've seen it, it's right by the Santa Rosa Mall, just down the street a little bit. And there were four gentlemen who actually built a lot of these buildings and they would take turns playing the role of architect and then the others would be like the assistants. So the stone house was built by one of these gentlemen. Um, his name, they didn't say his first name, 
but um, I don't want to butcher it, but I think it's Gelazi. Um, he built the stone house as um, a, a room and board, a boarding house for the people that were working at the quarries. And then there was also a restaurant and a general store. Food came with your room and board. And the stone house is located on um, Highway 12 as it intersects farmers. So near the Flamingo Hotel, you'll see it on the right there. And they also helped to build the Wolf House, but um, as we know, the Wolf House burnt down before construction was complete, but they did assist Jack London in building that structure as well. And then the Hotel La Rose, also built with paving stones from that Wymore Quarry by those same four gentlemen. And this is in the Railroad Square District. So once again, these buildings were springing up along the rail lines. And this, these buildings were built um, when Santa Rosa was only about 50 years old. So 1900, Santa Rosa was only 50 years old. And then these paving stones were also, like I said, shipped all throughout California. They were used to help rebuild after the 1906 earthquake. So you can kind of see here um, on the road, the, the flat stones, that's a paving stone. There weren't cobblestones really manufactured in Sonoma County. Um, those were a little rough on the horse-drawn carriages. So the, the, real, the real need was for these flat paving stones. So you weren't bumping on your horse along, along a bumpy road. And so if you go, you know, anywhere in California that has really, really old stone buildings, that stone could have come from Sonoma County. And then we know a lot of the stone infrastructure in San Francisco also came from Sonoma County after the earthquake. So I'm gonna give you a second to read this quote from Gayla Barron. Um, She's one of my favorite resources. She has a lot of great information on um, the mining, the Italian stonemakers, if you want to read up more on that, and on the town of Melita when it was a thriving town. And just she's got so much information on Sonoma County in general. So her articles are always wonderful. But this quote basically sums up um, how the, the paving stone industry started to decline at the advent of the automobile. So different road surfaces were needed, just like the cobblestones were a little too bumpy for the horses, the paving stones were a little too bumpy for the early automobiles. So we switched to um, a different substrate for our roads. But because we switched from paving stones, there was still more to do. So we had a lot of gravel mining that sprang up as the paving stone mining, those quarries started to close. And so here's a picture, D Street, Petaluma. Um, a lot of places just like they were lo located close to the rail lines would also be located close to the rivers because you could use the river to ship easily through an area that didn't have a ton of infrastructure yet. So that's 1954. And then gravel mining along the Russian River as well. Not the greatest ecological practice. Um, if you notice, they would just, you can see here with a little, little dump truck, a little earth mover here. Um, they would just dig big pits and scoop the gravel out and that would be used to make roads and other, in other industrial ways. And so it would create these giant pits. I think the river is back here, it looks like, the riparian corridor. And we know that the river is not, is not immovable. So when it rains, it floods onto the banks. Rivers also change their course as the water is coming through year by year. And so by digging these huge pits, it not only altered the way the water moved, but also took away a really vital habitat for the salmon because they like to lay their eggs in that loose gravel. And so you can really see how much this gravel mining would change the, the stream bed, the infrastructure. I mean, we have some, it looks like orchards going up right to the edge of the Russian River, which is also not the best practice, but still allows for some water to escape the banks when needed um, and isn't horribly changing the topography the way these big uh, mining practices did. 
And then here we have Riverfront Park. So each of these ponds at Riverfront, these lakes actually were part of the old gra gravel mining that went on in this area. You can see the Russian River coming down and these three ponds were big pits where they just scooped up the gravel. And over time, as, as the mining ceased to exist in this area, those big pits filled up with water from overflow from the Russian River and also rainwater. So you can really see how, how just jarring this must have looked when they were giant pits of dirt dug out of this beautiful landscape. And once again, not great for um, the salmon as well. So I think that brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, I'm really excited that you decided to join me today. I wish I could have gone into more detail. It's such an interesting subject, but when you're covering all of Sonoma County, there's so much to talk about. And I just want to thank the um, Regional Parks Foundation for sponsoring many of our interpretive programs. They really um, mean so much to us. And if you enjoyed today's program or you love our parks, we invite you to support at SonomaCountyParksFoundation.org. So now is a great time, Stephanie, if we want to see if there's any questions in the chat or in the Q&A. Hi, so there is a question from David who would like to know what type of rock was used for the paving stones? Um, that was the, the andesite. So a lot of folks would call it basalt, but, um, but it was the andesite. And that was present from in really big quantities all across that, that ridge that goes, um, that goes from Rincon Valley down to Sonoma. I'm assuming that like Quarry Hill Gardens area, perhaps they were mining the same, the same rock there as well. Great, thank you. And we have another one um, from John who'd like to know how deep are the gravel pits? I'm assuming at Riverfront. Ooh, that's a great question. I'm not actually sure how deep they are. I know that um, that they're like over 50 feet in places. There's a legend that there's actually an airplane um, under the water in one of those lakes. I don't know if that's true or not. So, so they're pretty deep, but I'm not, I'm not sure of the exact depth. And one more about quicksilver mining from Lisa. If there are any other resources that you recommend specifically on quicksilver mining in Sonoma County. Yeah, I can act, you know, I don't know them off the top of my head, but let me go ahead and put my email in the chat. And if you want to reach out and, um, and go ahead and email me, I can send you some of those resources. You could go down a rabbit hole. It was really interesting actually, and I had a hard time picking what to talk about in my scant 30 minutes that I had available. All right, I put my email in there if you guys wanna snag it. Um, any other questions? None that I'm seeing. Awesome. Well, thank you once again, um, everyone, for joining me. I, I'm really glad that, that I still got to do a version of this presentation. I did have a hike planned at Sonoma Valley that got canceled, so, so I was happy to still get, get to, um, to meet with you all, even if it's in a slightly different setting. I'm going to go ahead and leave um, the chat open for a few more moments in case anyone wants to write down my email with additional questions. And thanks so much for joining. Hey, and Ellie. Stephanie, Sorry, help. I saw a last minute question that I'd hate not to have answered. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Go ahead. Um, so Ron would like to know if there are any records of which companies were harvesting rock at the quarries and when. Yes, that is another rabbit hole. I found a site <laughs> that lists, I mean, there were hundreds. There were so many. Um, and it lists often the owners. I found um, like old bonds that they had printed that you can actually still buy on eBay, apparently. You can buy a bond related to these companies. I don't know if it's worth anything. I'm sure most of them are defunct by now. But, um, but yeah, there's, there's a list that lists the location, what was mined out of it, sometimes even the amount of mineral that was taken each year. So I can definitely send that info to you if you reach out via email. 
Sorry, I'm getting excited here. <laughs> All well, right. Any other questions? This time, I think that's it. All right, so feel free. We have um, Fire Ecology Talk with Katya coming up on Friday, if anyone's interested. Um, I believe we have another Tide Pool Talk next month. Um, I have a book club, if you feel like you're a fast reader, that's, that's coming up the first week of June. And you can find all of that information on uh, the Sonoma County Regional Parks website, if you're interested in joining for any of those. All right, so thank you all. I'm going to say goodbye now. Have a great day and thanks for joining.